Let's come and pray together. Our Heavenly Father, our God, we thank you and we call on your name. We glory in you, our God, our strength. You have told us to seek your presence continually and we do that right now. You've told us to remember the wondrous works that you've done and we do that now. You are our God and there is none like you. You never promise what you will not keep. You never fail, regardless of how small and insignificant we might appear. You have a people purchased by the blood of your Son, and you will bring them all into glory. But Lord, we have sinned and failed and doubted this week. We have not been who we are in Christ. We have loved the world and ignored your word. If we have forgotten you by thinking so much of ourselves, please forgive us, Lord. And just as you plucked Israel out of Egypt, just as you rescued David from the giant, just as you snatched Paul on the road to Damascus, you have saved us, redeemed us, called us. You have purchased us, foreknown us, justified and glorified us. We are yours and all our hope is in you. We believe we will stand in the day of judgment only because of your precious son. He has done all of this for us. Even more, he has given his life in exchange for ours. O oh, great God, hallelujah, what a saviour. And now, Lord, we desire this good news of your salvation to extend through all the earth. Bless our city in this area, we pray. Let us see more conversions. Bring the lost into this place and let them meet you here. We ask that you save our children. May all who grow up hearing the gospel believe it entirely. Save our lost spouses and co-workers and friends and enemies and neighbours and the people that we commute with and the ones at the coffee shop and the supermarket. Bless the work of the pregnancy care centres. Give them both money and staff to let every woman in our area know that she is not alone, that the life she carries is precious and that abortion is not her only option. Lord, we ask you to bring comfort, peace, strength and power to those who need your touch due to sickness, pain, loss, loneliness and family issues. Lord, we seek this not just for ourselves, but for those in our community. We especially want to lift up Bob and Janice Thompson to you today. Bob having been in hospital on Wednesday, sorry, Thursday and Friday. I thank you that he's been able to go home, but we pray that the tests will reveal all that needs to be done and the doctors would know just what they need to do because of your great hand on him. Lord, we pray that you bless the prayer meetings coming up this week as we lead up to Friday, as we pray for your covering against the Black Mass gathering in Noosa. We also pray for our state election on Saturday, that you would have your way, Lord. And whoever is elected to govern us, Lord, we pray that they would seek Jesus as their Lord and Saviour and that they would seek to lead with wisdom and integrity, no matter which side of politics they come from. And now, God, prepare our hearts to receive your word. May it change us. What good is hearing it unless it does that? Wash us, shape us, refine us, shatter our misconceptions about you and reconstruct our values into yours. Make us different. Make us less and you more. For that would be best of all. And we ask that you do this for Jesus' sake. Amen. I'd like to share with you now our scripture which comes from Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 1 right through to chapter 2 verse 10. Nehemiah 1, 1 to 2, 10. And it starts with Nehemiah's prayer. The words of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah, in the month of Kislev in the 20th year. While I was in the citadel at Susa, Hanani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men. And I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. 
When I heard these things, I sat down and I wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. And then I said, Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's family, have committed against you. We've acted very wickedly toward you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, laws that you gave your servant Moses. Remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if your exiled people are the farthest, sorry, are at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. They are your servants and your people, whom you redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favour in the presence of this man. I was cupbearer to the king. In the north, sorry, in the month of Nisan, in the twentieth year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not been sad in his presence before, so the king asked me, Why does your face look so sad when you are not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of heart. I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, May the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? The king said to me, What is it you want? And I prayed to the God of heaven, and I answered the king, If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favour in his sight, let him send me to the city in Judah where my ancestors are buried, so that I can rebuild it. Then the king, with the queen sitting beside him, asked me, How long will your journey take, and when will you get back? If it pleased the king to send me, so I set a time. I also said to him, If it pleases the king, may I have letters to the governors of Trans-Euphrates, so that they will provide me safe conduct until I arrive in Judah? And may I have a letter to Asaph, keeper of the royal park, so he will give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel by the temple and for the city wall and for the residence I will occupy. And because the gracious hand of my God was on me, the king granted my requests. So I went to the governors of Trans-Euphrates and gave them the king's letters. The king also had sent army officers and cavalry with me. Cavalry with me. When Sembalat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite official heard about this, they were very much disturbed that someone had come to promote the welfare of the Israelites. This is the word of our God, Lord and God. Thanks be to him. As we let God's word dwell in our hearts and our minds today, let's continue to worship with that great hymn, one, one, number 152 in our green hymn books, Word of God, O Word of God Incarnate. Let's worship together. 